Hi everyone. So I promised that I'd share the details of my water fasting regimen. So here we go. But first, let me just say this. If you don't have any idea of what water fasting is, you haven't seen my previous video yet, you don't know what I'm talking about, you haven't done any research or anything like that, I need you to pause for a second and kind of go back and familiarize yourself with that information probably before you watch this. Or you can watch this and then go back and watch it. But again, this may not make sense without seeing what the previous video talked about first, okay? And like I said previously, I want you to discuss this with your doctor first before you begin any type of fasting regimen and you have not done anything like this before and you're going through chemotherapy and you have chronic health issues or anything like that. Just make sure that you talk to your doctor about it first. Okay, so after I had done all the research about water fasting and looked at the different like recommendation, uh, recommended schedules and things like that, I decided that what would work best for me would be to do the 48 hour fast. Honestly, it was always probably more than 48 hours, but just to kind of give myself like, to not set myself up for failure, um, I felt like that was a good like area to be in where I felt like I could accomplish that, I could achieve that goal. And you know, at the end of the day, if I did more than 48 hours, then I was basically rocking it out. But if I had done just 48 hours, I still felt like you know, I accomplished something, I didn't fail um, at the assignment, you know, I understood the assignment, so to speak. So 48 hours was just a minimum, okay? And so this was pretty much the breakdown. My fast started 24 hours before my chemotherapy cycle. And so I looked at it as I wanted to allow my gut to have time to rest before any chemotherapy was going through my veins, going through my system. And basically how I saw that is if it allowed my gut to rest, then my cells would be at rest also. So my treatment, when I went through phase A, because if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I had phase A and phase B, two completely different um, chemotherapy uh, cocktails. And so with phase A, my treatments were always on Tuesdays. And so I would start my fast on Monday morning uh, before whatever the time was for my chemotherapy session. Um, and so basically if my chemo was on Tuesday or if, I, if my appointment, let's say that, because I would go in for labs first and then after labs, I would go in for the chemotherapy. And so let's say my appointment was at 9 a.m. My fast start time would be 9 a.m. Monday morning. Now, this is not taken into consideration that most days, honestly, my fast technically, or my last meal technically would have been Sunday night, whatever Sunday night's dinner was, um, because it was rare that I'd wake up early Monday morning to eat breakfast to then start the fast um, and then you know go into my chemotherapy the next day and continue on. That was very rare. So with that being said, again, most times my gut was already you know in the process of being at rest uh, before that start time because my last meal would have been you know whatever the last meal is or whatever the last meal was on that Sunday. And so I'd go into, you know, my Monday, I'd start that day off with knowing that, okay, at, again, 9 a.m. is an example. My appointments were always in the morning. And so, you know, this is a good example to throw out. So Monday morning at 9 a.m., I'd know, okay, fast start time. And so, again, just going off of, you know, whatever the last time I had something to eat, I knew I was going at 9 a.m. starting with just, just drinking water. So I saw my start time as my start time to start drinking water is how I saw it. That's just a way that, it was a way that I kept up with, you know, the system of it. And so 9 a.m., that was the water start time. So that meant get the drinking, okay? Get, get it down, all right? So how my typical 
regimen would look. Again, 9 a.m. Monday, start time. Appointment Tuesday at 9 a.m. I go in for labs. They would, you know, I would have my appointment with the nurse practitioner and then she would pretty much give the okay that it was, you know, for me, it was fine for me to go ahead and get my treatment that was scheduled. And in phase A, I was doing this every week. And so I'd go in at, you know, whatever given time and go ahead and start my infusion. And I would continue to drink my water all throughout infusions that whole day into the next day. And so I made it a point to always know what time my infusion ended. The end time was important for me because whatever that end time was, that was what time my fast needed to end the next day. And so if infusions didn't end until 3 p.m., my fast continued on into Wednesday until 3 p.m. And so even though even though I say it's 48 hours, like I said, in reality, it was always more than 48 hours because I didn't want to get like so stuck on, well, I started Monday at 9 a.m. and then move forward 24 hours Tuesday at 9 a.m. and then be ready to end Wednesday at 9 a.m. if it hadn't been 24 hours since I received the infusion in my system. And so I wanted that last final 24 hour stretch to be within whenever I got the last drip of the treatment on that Tuesday. And so again, the end time was important because that's when my end time was gonna be, that's what the end time was gonna be for the, the fast to end in 24 hours on Wednesday. So hopefully that wasn't confusing. Um, again, 48 hours was the goal. Most times I was an overachiever. Start time meant start drinking water. End time was 24 hours from the last uh, dose of treatment when that ended. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now with phase two of treatment, things were a little bit different. I had to adjust my schedule a little bit. I had to adjust the goal, so to speak, because what I quickly realized, even though my goal was still 48 hours, when I started the adriamycin, um, phase B was AC, and so that's adriamycin and carboplatin. Um, or, sorry, adriamycin and cytoxin. I don't know, anyway, back up. When I started the adriamycin and that cocktail um, treatment plan, I quickly realized that the adriamycin, like my gut just didn't agree with it. It definitely affected my gut. And I wasn't like throwing up um, and I'm like even careful with saying nauseous, but I definitely felt queasy. And I know you probably like queasy, nauseous, it's all the same thing. Um, it was queasy, that's, that's the way I like to describe it. I felt queasy within hours of getting that treatment. And so I don't like to say that I broke the fast at that point because I have a whole system of what breaking the fast looks like for me. But I will say that I had to put something in my stomach within hours of getting the adriamycin treatment because of how it made me feel. The queasy, queasiness that I felt reminded me of when I was pregnant um, in my pregnancies where I had that feeling of if I don't eat something, then I'm probably going to be sick. And so that's what I kind of compared it to. And so when that feeling started coming on, like again, it was a very familiar feeling. And so I'm like, okay, if I don't get anything in my system right now, then I'm probably going to get sick and I don't want to get sick. And so let me get something. And so I do bread or crackers or ginger ale at that point. Um, again, something to kind of line my stomach so that I didn't get to the point where I'm puking and throwing up and feeling really crappy. And so with that being said, again, I don't necessarily call that breaking it um, because I didn't go into a full blown meal. Um, but again, I had to put something in. So don't know a term that we want to call it, but I had to maybe interrupt it. Maybe we'll say that I had to interrupt the, the fast probably within about 36 hours. So I'd still have my 24 hours before my appointment. I'd go in for my appointment, get my labs done, see the nurse practitioner, and then go in for my treatment. From the time that the treatment ended, I usually would try to get to a point 
of where I was at least 36 hours into the fast. Sometimes it was a little more than that because you know there were times where I could go more. The first treatment, I had four cycles of adriamycin, thank God. And so that meant four fasting periods. The very first one was probably the hardest because I didn't know what to expect. Um, and so I didn't really, again, know how bad it was gonna get. But again, I knew that I needed to get something in my stomach. And so at that point, when I went in for the second, the, uh, when I went in for the second round, at that point, I knew what to expect, or at least had a good foundation. Um, of course, with it being the second one, I'm like, please let the last one be the foundation. Let that be the, the, the baseline of what it was like and not that it was gonna progressively get worse because I didn't, I didn't even wanna imagine that it got worse because I didn't wanna be sick. I had been fine for so long that I, wanted, I didn't wanna imagine what it would be like to be sick. And so going into the second, you know, cycle of the adriamycin, thank goodness it didn't get worse. It was pretty much about the same. Um, but at this point I knew what to expect so I could fast a little bit longer knowing that for the most part, I'm not gonna get too bad. I also, the first time around, realized at some point I needed to take the anti-nausea medicine that they gave me a prescription for that I had never used at all up until that point. And so with the second, um, cycle, the second fasting period, I ended up taking the anti-nausea medicine a little sooner and so that got me through a little longer as well. By the fourth and final cycle, the final uh, fasting period, I, it was completely different. And so I had called on my close friends, my close family to all join me in prayer and fasting this time around. And if you are not a believer and you don't know anything about the power of prayer, then I, I don't know what else to say. Like you, you gotta get with the program because it's so much power in prayer and especially prayer in numbers. And so I was able to witness and feel the manifestation of that in my fourth, um, in my fourth fasting period. And so I had done everything the exact same, you know, going into it. I fasted before, went and got my treatment continued my fast, what I immediately noticed was I felt less queasiness. Um, I didn't feel as bad. Like I just, I could immediately tell the difference in how I was feeling. I didn't even take the pill that time and didn't have to, you know, put something on my stomach as fast. And so it was an immediate uh, change in terms of how the adriamycin affected my body. Now, whether it was just the fasting, I'm probably gonna say it wasn't. I'm gonna definitely say it was probably the prayer and the fasting together with that. But nevertheless, again, I went into it expecting to feel like I felt the last time and I immediately felt much, much better. And so was able to get closer to my goal of 48 hours with that fast and was able to just rebound so much faster. Like I was up and, and out and about um, days ahead of schedule compared to the previous cycles, the previous um, times that I had gone in for that treatment. So the recovery period was way better. All in all, prayer and fasting, it's a lot of power to it. So at the end of the day, um, I, I definitely recommend it. I recommend that anybody that can do it, definitely do it. Again, I say that my chemo side effects were very, very mild. When we think about hair loss, when we think about skin, discol skin discoloration, um, nails turning black, all of that stuff seemed very small to me because at the end of the day, it didn't affect my physical ability to go out, to do things, to enjoy life. The phase B where I did have some effects on that, again, I feel like it was mild because um, to me, queasiness is mild because I'm not throwing up, I'm not stuck hanging over the toilet. So for me, that's still mild. And after hearing some others, you know, share their stories about how it made them feel, again, it made me feel like, you know, what I was doing was definitely working and it was making a difference in how my body was responding, responding to things and how it was recovering. And so I never got real sick. And for me, that was a win. How much water did I consume when I did my water fasting? Um, maybe a question that you have, and it's a good question if that's what you're thinking. And so I calculated my weight or I, um, 
I, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I converted, sorry. I converted my weight from pounds to kilograms. And so my kilogram weight was about 63 kilograms. And so I, my goal was to drink ounces equivalent to my weight in kilograms. And so if I weighed 63 kilograms, my goal was to drink 63 ounces of water a day. And I pretty much drunk more than that every day. My, um, what I like to use was a bottle, this same type of water actually, the alkaline water that I can get from Sam's. Um, by the case and these bottles are 33.8 fluid ounces and my goal was to drink two of these bottles because that would take me over what my um, minimum was anyway and so I you know drank one bottle refill it drink another and then as the day progressed I probably had another bottle or a half bottle at some point so in reality, I always drunk more than the 63 kilograms, um, just in general. And I went into my infusions well, like my hydration was really well. How I knew that is because you can see it with the output. And so everything that you're taking in, you have to, you know, put it out as well. And so if your urine is, you know, clear, pretty much looks like water, then you are definitely hydrated well enough. Um, the hydration is important with chemotherapy because the chemotherapy will dry you out um, as it's attacking cells, good cells, bad cells, all cells. It's um, going to put you at risk for dehydration. And you know, those who are affected with real serious side effects and throwing up and you know can't keep anything down, then your risk of dehydration goes up even more. And so, you know, Another benefit of water fasting is that you can go into your treatments well hydrated in advance, which makes a difference in how your body responds to what's going through your veins, what's going through your system. So going into my treatments, again, well hydrated. Most days, my nurse would ask me if I wanted to get extra fluids um, or if I wanted to finish my fluids. Most times I didn't need to. I you know, finish my treatment and I'm out of here, I'm going home. Um, whereas I had other, you know, folks that would have to go back in to get extra fluids or, you know, they definitely have to stay to finish their bag of fluids, um, you know, to keep them feeling good. And so most times I didn't, I mean, I don't remember ever going back in for extra fluids. And I don't know, maybe once or twice I finished a bag just because I was sitting there talking and enjoying the, you know, conversation with another survivor sitting next to me, but it wasn't a requirement. I didn't need it. Um, and so that's a benefit. And so yeah, that's that's about how much I drunk, and that's how I um, that's how I calculated it. So um, so yeah, pay attention to your hydration. You're gonna need the water. Period. Whether you are fasting um, and abstaining from food and only drinking water, or if you're just choosing to drink water and eat food, at the end of the day. The water is important regardless, so drink your water regardless. All right, so that was my fasting regimen. Remember to talk to your doctor before you begin anything. Remember to do your research. Remember to do what works for you um, and speak with your care team and let everyone be in collaboration with you to support you along the way. Next, I'll share about how I broke my fast because again, I had a system to that. I never went into a full heavy meal after I fasted for you know however many hours and so I'm gonna go into that next and kind of walk down and break that down how I approached it and what I ate and how intentional I was about what I ate okay guys that's that's it that's all I have so remember to like comment share um, if you feel like this may help someone else be sure to share it with them as well also, if you have done this, I would love to hear your regimen and what worked for you. So go down in the comments and share, you know, your experience with it if it's something that you did as well. Okay? Thanks, guys.